Hi, here's Dave, your drum sound. If you don't know me, in this channel I talk exclusively about drum sound. I work as drum tech, backline tech for the last 20 years, so I've had the chance to work with many drummers, many drums and many drum companies. In today's video I'll show you how the mounting hardware influenced the sound of a tom. Here we have pretty much a drum from each of the major companies, so stay with me because this is gonna be really really interesting. I've shot some similar videos a few years back, but in Italian, which is my native language, since I've received a lot of requests about those videos, I've decided to re-record it, but in English. In this video, you may find the solution to a problem like a tom that sounds choked or a floor tom that has too much sustain. As far as the toms, I'm gonna play it on its own stand and then I use this kind of makeshift stand which will help me to have kind of a floating stand so there's no influence from the mount. I know that there are some isolation systems on the market made especially for snare drum stands, but I found this working very well for the purpose of this video. Just one last thing before jumping into the tests. Here we are not looking for the best or the worst. There won't be a winner and this is not a challenge. You'll find most of the drums having less sustain when, uh, when mounted on the stand and this is totally okay. Most of the time we don't need a long note. Moreover, the tuning play a big role as well, but I'll talk about this after the tests. Without further ado, let's jump into it.
In this case, this perk reference has die-cast hoops, a thick shell, and the mount is pretty heavy. Let's take a step forward, so I'm going to remove the Optimum system and record it once again. There you go. Anything firmly attached on the shell, or on the hardware in this case, will affect the sound of the drum. Let's try to loosen those two X screws and let's see what happens. No big deal. But what if I do this? Now let's see what happens when we use a tom on a snare stand.
Now let's tighten the basket screw. As I said at the beginning of this video, most of the time we don't need a super long note from the toms. But at the same time, I don't like, and that's me, having dead spots when I tune a drum. Who didn't play a kit where there was a tom that didn't have the same voice as the rest of the kit? So you had to retune it, so change your sound to fix that sound issue. I am the player, so I want drums that serve me no matter where I tune them, high, medium, or low. I want tone. Then, if it's too much, I'll make some adjustments. Now let's take a quick look at the drums that I've just tested. The 70 Ludwigs sounded pretty dry on its own bracket, and it's well known that brackets that are directly attached to the shell suck up a lot of tone and this effect gets amplified on heavy drums. Just think about those uh, super heavy toms from the 80s, where the mount consisted in uh, a long tube passing through the shell. Speaking of Yamaha, the mount holds a lot of sustain, and this is why the recording custom was really hot in the 80s. It's possible to have more or less ring by moving the tom on the X mount. The mount doesn't pass through the shell on the newer version of the YESS mounting system, but it still plays a big role in shorten the sustain. Moving on, DW is well known for having a lot of sustain, and their STM mounting system play a big role in it. It's not physically attached to the shell, but it floats, so the drum can move freely. Same thing for the OCDP Tom. In this case, the rim has a lot of room to move. In addition, the tom is shallower and has standard triple flange hoops. So, it's lightweight and less heavy on the rim. There is a rim mount even on the Gretsch USA Custom, but in this case, the rim is in touch with four of the five tension rods. So, a lot of contact with the heavy diecast hoop. This is why, when I lifted the drum on the side, there was more tone and sustain. For example, my 14-inch Gretz Tom from the 80s sounded choked even though there was a rim mount on it. Taking in mind what we've just saw on the 12-inch Gretz, I've removed two of the ears, for lack of a better word, <laughs> in the rim, so now there's less contact between the rim and the hoop, and the drum has more tone. The same thing applies to floor toms. So, let's see what's happened when we switch the original DW legs with this standard made by Gibraltar. And on the third sound file, I'll switch once again to this kind of soft rubber feet. This leg is made by Gibraltar as well.
As you may heard, the drum with the hard rubber feet sounded shorter with less tone and more overtones. That's because the legs transferred the vibration, so the sound straight to the floor, while the DW legs are designed to isolate the drum from the floor. Same thing for the super soft rubber feet. In this case, with a few bucks, you can improve the tone of your floor tom, if you need it. As you may understand, it's possible to control the sound of a floor tom by mix and matching different kinds of legs. You can reverse a leg or take one or two rubber feet off to shorten the resonance. The floor plays a role as well. If your drum kit is on a drum riser or on a wooden platform, your floor tom may sound shorter. If you want to check the sound of your floor tom, just hit it on its own legs, then lift it and hit it once again, so you can understand if there are any difference in sound. Bear in mind that uh, the room where we are playing has a sound, so try a different spot and different rooms. Even though this is a super wide topic, I think I covered all the bases and beyond. I hope all of this was helpful. I'm done for now, so see you soon.